This is the Ender 3 version 2 3D printer from Creality. I've owned this 3D printer for a bit over two months. I'm probably not the heaviest of users. I, I tried counting it up in my head and I'm sure I've forgotten some, but I think I've printed like 20 different things and they've, for the most part, they've just turned out fine. There, there was a bit of fiddling at first getting things all set, but for the most part, it's been a push the button and let it go sort of thing, which is exactly what I want in a 3D printer. I've got these two upgrade kits and today I'm going to be doing two inexpensive upgrades to my printer. First I'm going to replace the bed leveling springs. This should be like a quick five minute replacement job. Uh, this kit is about 13 bucks US, $16 Canadian. Comes with some knurled wheels and some springs. And the second upgrade happens around back. With the second upgrade I'm going to be replacing this plastic extruder assembly with a machined aluminum one. And this kit is about 20 bucks US, $25 Canadian. And full disclosure, both these kits along with some filament were provided to me by banggood.com. I got links to all of this down in the video description, but there's all kinds of versions of these that you can find in various places online. Okay, first the springs. This is a really simple thing. There are eight parts. There are four aluminum wheels and there are four heavy duty springs if I can get them apart. Looks like they're nicely tangled together. There we go. There's... So all we really have to do here is unscrew each corner of the leveling bed, take off the old wheel, now you can just lift the bed, get it all the way up, Take the spring out, put the new spring in, and do that for all four corners. Here are the old springs and here are the new springs. The old springs are your basic coil of wire. They're round, like if you were to cut this in cross section, it's round. The new spring, as you can see from the top, it's flattened, it's a flattened coil. And there are a lot more a lot more winding, so this one is much softer, this one is much harder to compress. And really there's nothing particularly wrong with the old wheels, but the red ones look cool. So told you it was easy, four springs, four wheels, all done. The only thing left to do now is to level the bed, but I will wait until I'm done the other upgrade for that. The springs are the main thing, the wheels didn't really matter, but um, the stock springs are much weaker. The replacement springs from everything that I've read online, they will last longer and more importantly, they will hold their position better. The, 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 the stock springs reportedly need to be readjusted much, much more often. So the next upgrade is this extruder kit and as you can see this has a lot more little pieces to it but let's put it on a tray so they don't go rattling away. First we need to remove the filament so I'm going to uh, warm up the tip and with the tip hot enough we can push it forward a bit to extrude a bit and then we just crank it all the way back and take off the handle. And now let's cool it off and we will shut it down. Here's another look with all the parts unpacked and laid out. There's a spring, there's a, a gear, there's some long screws and short screws, bearing. So yeah, it's a bit intimidating at first glance, but we just keep track of things as we take them apart on the old one and just put them all back in the same order, just out of new parts. Loosen this screw. And then the spring should come out. Notice this on a little bump there. And this spring has a little piece inside it. Same Allen key, loosen this, and we'll take the whole arm assembly off. And I'm gonna lay out the old pieces on the old page, and here's the new ones. And as I, as I take them off, I'm gonna sort out the new ones, which I hope will help me. So here's the piece that goes inside the spring and then I need a matching screw 
so let's put that together up there and then here's the arm let's get that set long screw goes in it we're going to need a bearing we're going to need this but let's just group those together for now after removing the arm we're going to take the gear off that has two tiny little allen screws holding it in place we'll loosen this one the new one is pretty much identical pull the little clamp off the hose there and let's loosen the connector and then this is all off and lastly the three screws that are holding this on and you got to hold the motor when you're taking off the last one yeah. oh well mine mine is staying on there i think it's just stuck a bit so now it's all taken apart we're just going to reverse it we're going to start with the same base plate that we just took off and we're going to start with the countersunk screw put the aluminum piece in place make sure the feed is going this way and we'll drop this in lightly put the first one in place and the screws on the other side I'll come by later and tighten them all up let's put this back in yeah I had to stop there for a minute and go back to the manufacturer because these were different the uh, the original extruder had this brass nut connected to the tube which threads in but on the new one there's no threads and I was quite puzzled for a minute then I went and did some digging and I found out this is what's called the new mark 8 extruder and on this one it's just a quick release little quick release piece that pops in and it's supposed to be easier to assemble but it just caused me a little bit of consternation because uh, I came across several sets of instructions showing this and I had to go digging to find one that talked about this so if you have the new mark 8 pay attention I actually had to slice the hose off because there was no way I was getting it out of this brass coupling let me take this little black gizmo and it gets popped right into the new mark 8 extruder and the hose gets pushed all the way in and you take the little retaining clip And that clamps it into place there we go it actually is really simple to assemble take the new little brass gear and slide it onto the shaft make sure one of the allen keys lines up with the flat spot bring it down bring it down so the teeth line up with the hole where the extruder filament goes and tighten it in careful you don't strip these because they're quite small so now let's put this arm together notice it has this little red collar that slips in there and that is the longer screw that goes in just put that there we need the pulley we need a little washer and this little screw with the put the washer on put the pulley on put it into place here tight enough so that it still turns okay and on the inside there's that hole and you put this little screw in there that's where the spring is going to go this is just to keep the spring from jumping around it's like that now bring the arm into position and we will put it here now there are some instructions online that talk about a washer there was no washer in my kit so I presume it is not required on the new version of the kit so last three pieces we get the spring and this little sleeve that goes in the spring and this last screw I'm going to start the screw first just because that way it's already there when I start wrestling with the bouncy spring but I'm not having it stick through here then we'll get the spring and it goes onto this screw and then we will compress it into position here 
My screw is a bit too far. Let me back that up using the Allen key. Let's push this. Come on. And then put the screw, extend the screw into the spring, into that little collar. There we go. And there's a top view of it all back together. Springs in, tube is connected, the gear is in there, pulley's in place, and the arm is doing what it should. We're off to a good start. Let's see how it does in a couple hours. So about four hours later, and that turned out pretty cool. I'm not very practiced at uh, supports under overhang, so this is one of the first times I've done it. Let's try to get this apart without breaking it. There we go. I didn't really have anything special I needed to print right now, so I just grabbed a little Star Wars robot off of Thingiverse. I just wanted to make sure everything was working after doing all these changes, and it is. So that's it for now, folks. Thanks for stopping by. If you missed when I built this, you click up there for the video that I'll talk about when I actually built the printer. And if you click down below, that's a video that YouTube thinks you're interested in. And there's probably a subscribe button somewhere and we'll see you on the next one.